it's been a little while since we read Charlotte's Web, right? It's been a little while. It's been, well, I guess probably three weeks because y'all didn't read it while I was gone when I had a little cold before Christmas break, right? Right. So it's been a little while. So let's review what's happened in Charlotte's Web so far. What's happened? Who can remember? Well, I think you do. Let's just think about a little bit. Who's Charlotte? I'm the spider. The spider. Okay, and what's this guy's name? That guy. He's the pig. Oh, okay. I see a couple hands up. I think you guys will probably remember it if you think about it. Miranda? Wilbur. Wilbur, very good. Does anybody remember her name? The girl, the little girl? The Amy? Remember, she's named after a plant. Do you remember Troy? I can't quite hear you, darling. Did you hear Miranda? Miranda said it's Fern. The little girl is Fern. I have never heard of a boy named Fern, but I've heard of girls named Fern. But um, that's not to say the boy couldn't be named Fern. But her name is Fern. And remember, she had she raised Wilbur when he was just a little baby. She she gave him bottles, right? And then her dad said, "You can't keep him anymore, but you can sell him to your uncle." Okay, now. Charlotte did something amazing. What did Charlotte do? Jaya? Please don't do that, Jimmy. Right, so she made this web, and the first thing she spelled was some pig. Right? Why did she make that web? What was her goal? What was her goal? Hayden? Oh, my God. Oh. Uh, not to make a home. What would, what, why did she need to make that web that said some pig? Ashlyn? To protect Wilbur. To protect Wilbur. Because what was going to happen to Wilbur? Oh, Sophia, what was going to happen to Wilbur? He was going to get eaten. Oh, oh my goodness. Ferns? Ferns' uncle, Mr. Zuckerman was planning on butchering Wilbur and eating him, right? Because that's what people do with pigs, you know. But um, but Wilbur was very special. And most importantly, Charlotte was very, very special in order to try to find a way to save Wilbur. So people thought that, who did they think made the web? Who did they think made the web? Ellie? Wilbur. Right, Wilbur didn't actually make the web though, it was all Charlotte, right? So that's kind of like where we are. Is, and a lot, a lot of people have come to see Wilbur, which has been very important because do you think that um, they would come and see him and then Mr. Zuckerman would still probably want to eat him? No, right? If you have a famous pig, are you going to want to eat that famous pig? No. No. So do you think that Charlotte's plan might be working? Yeah, Charlotte's plan to save Wilbur might be working, huh? Ms. Kenison, I eat bacon. I think a lot of us eat bacon. It's very yummy. <laughs> but we don't want to know that that bacon comes from Wilbur, huh? <laughs> <laughs> Not our special friend, Wilbur. So he, let's see, we are on page, or chapter, I mean, uh, six, 16, I believe. Chapter 16. Um, and they are headed to the fair. The fair. Zuckerman is taking Wilbur to the fair. What? We did not finish all the chapters. We have this 
Yeah, we still have this one. Okay, yeah, maybe another chapter book, but we didn't finish this one yet. Okay, can we have quiet so that we can all listen? All right. Ah, uh, this, this chapter, chapter 16, is called Off to the Fair. The night before the county fair, everybody went to bed early. Fern and Avery, do you remember who Avery is? A few of you do. The little boy. The little boy who is Fern's brother. And Avery's kind of a wild boy. He likes to put frogs and all sorts of critters and things in his pockets, right? <laughs> what, Jimmy? Yeah. Uh, there's a brother called Avery. And he throws what is that her? Yeah. Okay. The night before the county fair, everybody went to bed early. Fern and Avery were in bed by eight. Avery lay dreaming that the Ferris wheel had stopped and that he was in the top car. Fern lay dreaming that she was getting sick in the swings. Lurvy was in bed by 8.30. Remember, Lurvy is the farm, um, the farm worker on the Zuckerman's farm, right? He lay dreaming that he was throwing baseballs at a cloth cat and winning a genuine Navajo blanket. Mr. and Mrs. Zuckerman were in bed by nine. Mrs. Zuckerman lay dreaming about a deep freeze unit. Mr. Zuckerman lay dreaming about Wilbur. He dreamt that Wilbur had grown until he was 106 feet long and 92 feet high, and that he won all the prizes at the fair and was covered with blue ribbons, and even had a blue ribbon tied to the end of his tail. Down in the barn cellar, the animals, too, went to sleep early, all except Charlotte. Tomorrow would be fair day. Every creature planned to get up early to see Wilbur off on his great adventure. When morning came, everybody got up at daylight. The day was hot. Up the road at the Arable's house, Fern lugged a pair pail of hot water to her room and took a sponge bath. Then she put on her prettiest dress because she knew she would see boys at the fair. Mrs. Arabelle scrubbed the back of Avery's neck and wet his hair and parted it and brushed it hard till it stuck to the top of his head. All but about six hairs that stood straight up. So he had a little cowlick where they stood straight up at the back of his head. Avery put on clean underwear, clean blue jeans, and a clean shirt. Mr. Arabelle dressed, ate breakfast, then went out and polished his truck. He had offered to drive everybody to the fair, including Wilbur. Bright and early, Lurvy put clean straw in Wilbur's crate and lifted it into the pig pen. The crate was green. In gold letters it said, Zuckerman's famous pig. And then there's a picture, because remember um, Mr. Zuckerman had a dream that Wilbur grew Really, really big. That's bigger than our classroom and way tall, probably taller than the school. And then he won all the blue blue ribbons. So there he is, cut really, really big. Look, the fair is like way down here below him. He's really, really big and he's covered in full ribbons. I'll put that on the camera so you guys can go and look at that later. What the? Junior is not that big and fat. Oh my goodness. Oh, he is not. I've seen Junior. He's really tall, but he certainly isn't this tall, and he's definitely not this fat. <laughs> and he always gives me an idea. He might earn a bunch of blue ribbons by running. Yeah. All right. Okay. I need quiet pieces. Thank you, thank you. Charlotte had her web looking fine for the occasion. Wilbur ate his breakfast slowly. He tried to look radiant without getting food in his ears. And because radiant, remember, was like the last word that she had written in, his, in, in her web. 
In the kitchen, Mrs. Zuckerman suddenly made, made an announcement. Homer, she said to her husband, I'm going to give that pig a buttermilk bath. A what? Said Mr. Zuckerman. A buttermilk bath. My grandmother used to bathe her pig with buttermilk when it got dirty. I just remembered. Wilbur's not dirty, said Mr. Zuckerman proudly. He's filthy behind the ears, said Mrs. Zuckerman. Every time Lurvy slops him, the food runs down around his ears, then it dries and forms a crust. He also has a smudge on one side where he lays in the manure. He lays in clean straw, corrected Mr. Zuckerman. Well, he's dirty, and he's going to have a bath. Mr. Zuckerman sat down weakly and ate a donut. His wife went to the woodshed. When she returned, she wore rubber boots and an old raincoat and carried a bucket of buttermilk and a small wooden paddle. Eat if you're crazy, mumbled Mr. Zuckerman. But she paid no attention to him. Together, they walked to the pig pen. Mr. Zuckerman wasted no time. She climbed in with Wilbur and went to work. Mrs. Zuckerman, sorry, wasted no time. She climbed in with Wilbur and went to work. Dipping her paddle in the buttermilk, she rubbed him all over. The geese gathered around to see the fun, and so did the sheep and the lambs. Even Templeton poked his head out cautiously to watch Wilbur get a butter buttermilk bath. Charlotte got so interested, she lowered herself on a drag line to see better. And it's really hard to see, I know, especially for you guys, but there's a little tiny Charlotte lowered behind Mrs. Zuckerman. She's, she lowered herself on her web, and she's looking around, seeing what, what's going on. But she's teeny tiny, so it's really, really hard to see. Yeah. If you guys watch the video tonight, you could see her. What, Madara? Oh, my goodness. Okay, honey, go get some paper towels. Go get some paper towels. Clean that up. Lots, lots, lots. Quick, 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 quick. Quick, 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 quick. Put it in. Oh, my goodness. Yeah. Okay, go get more. Go get more. Go get more. Okay, honey, more than one. down a minute too so it's not like sticky charlotte got so interested she lowered herself on a drag line so she could see better right. wilbur shh, 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 stood still and closed his eyes he felt the buttermilk trickling down his sides he opened his mouth and some of the buttermilk ran in it was delicious he felt radiant and happy. When Mrs. Zuckerman got through and rubbed him dry, he was the cleanest, prettiest pig you ever saw. He was pure white, pink around the ears and snout, and smooth as silk. Zuckermans would have to change into their best clothes. Lurvy went to shave and put on his plaid shirt and his purple necktie. 
The animals were left to themselves in the barn. The seven goslings paraded around and around their mother. Please, please, please take us to the fair, begged the goslings. Then all seven began teasing to go. Please, 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 please. They made quite a racket. Jimmy, turn around, please eat your breakfast. Children, snapped the goose. We're staying quietly, idly, idly at home. Only Wilbur, Ilbur, Ilbur is going to the fair. Just then, Charlotte interrupted. I shall go too, she said softly. I have decided to go with Wilbur. He may need me. We can't tell what may happen at the fairgrounds. Somebody's got to go who knows how to write. And I think Templeton better come too. I need, might need somebody to run errands and do general work. I'm staying right here, grumbled the rat. I haven't the slightest interest in fairs. That's because you've never been to one, remarked the old sheep. A fair is a rat's paradise. Everybody spills food at the fair. A rat crept out late, late at night and had a feast. A rat can creep out late at night and have a feast. In the horse barn, you'll find King you need to quit walking around without your mask on, hun. In the horse barn, you'll find oats that the trotters and pacers have spilled. In the trampled grass of the infield, you'll find old discarded lunch boxes containing the remains of peanut butter sandwiches, hard boiled eggs, cracker crumbs, bits of donuts and particles of cheese. In the hard packed dirt of the midway, after the glaring lights are out and the people have gone home to bed, you'll find a veritable treasure of popcorn fragments, frozen custard dribblings, Candied apples abandoned by tired children, sugar fluff crystals, salted almonds, popsicles, partially gnawed on ice cream cones, and wooden sticks of lollipops. Everywhere is loot for a rat. In tents, in boots, in haylofts. Why, a fair has a dis enough disgusting leftover food to satisfy a whole army of rats. Templeton's eyes were blazing. Blazing means they, kind of, they like had a really excited look to them. They were, they, is it true? He said. Is this appetizing yarn of yours true? And by yarn, in this case, he means a story. I like high living, and what you say tempts me. It's true, said the old sheep. Go to the fair, Templeton. You'll find the conditions at a fair will surpass your wildest dreams. Buckets with sour mash, Jimmy, don't walk around without your mask, please. Sticking to them, tin cans containing particles of tuna fish, greasy paper bags stuffed with rotten. <laughs> That's enough, Craig Templeton. Don't tell me anymore, I'm going. Good, said Charlotte, winking at the old sheep. Now then, there is no time to be lost. Wilbur will soon be put into the crate. Templeton and I must get into the crate now and hide ourselves. The rat didn't waste a minute. He scampered over to the crate, crawled between the slats, and pulled a straw up over himself so he was hidden from sight. All right, said Charlotte, I'm next. She sailed through the air, let out a drag line, and dropped gently to the ground. Then she climbed to the side of the crate and hid herself inside a knot hole in the top board. The old sheep nodded. What a cargo, she said. That sign ought to say Zuckerman's famous pig and two stowaways. Look out, people are coming, umming, umming, shouted the gander. Chase it, chase it, chase it. A big truck with Airbull at the wheel, back with Mr. Airbull at the wheel, backed slowly down to the barnyard. Lurvy and Mr. Zuckerman walked alongside. Fern and Avery were standing in the body of the truck, hanging out on the sideboards. Listen to me, whispered the old chief to Wilbur. When they open the crate and try to put you in, struggle. Don't go without a tussle. Pigs always resist when they're being loaded. If I struggle, I'll get dirty, said Wilbur. Never mind that. Do as I say. Struggle. If you were to walk into that crate without resisting, Zuckerman that might think you were bewitched. He'd be scared to go to the fair. Templeton poked his head up through the straw. Struggle if you must, he said, but kindly remember... I'm hiding here in the crate and don't want to be stepped on. 
or kicked in the face or pummeled or crushed in any way or squashed or buffeted about or bruised or lacerated or scarred or biffed. Just watch what you're doing, Mr. Radiant, when they get to shoving you in. Be quiet, Templeton, said the sheep. Pull in your head, they're coming. Look radiant, Wilbur. Lay low, Charlotte. Talk it up, geese. The truck backed slowly into the pig pen and stopped. Mr. Arabelle cut the motor, got out, walked to the rear and lowered the tailgate. The geese cheered. Mr. Arabelle got out of the truck. Fern and Avery jumped to the ground. Mrs. Zuckerman came walking down from the house. Everybody lined up at the fence and stood for a moment, admiring Wilbur and the beautiful green crate. Nobody realized the crate already contained a rat and a spider. That's some pig, said Mr. Mrs. Arabelle. He's terrific, said Lurvy. He's very radiant, said Fern, remembering the day he was born. What, Jimmy? Can you wait just a couple minutes? We're almost done with this chapter. Well, said Mrs. Zuckerman, he's clean anyway. The buttermilk certainly helped. Mr. Arbel studied Wilbur carefully. Yes, he's a wonderful pig. It's hard to believe that he was the runt of the litter. Um, Cambry, if you could dump some of that milk in the sink so that it's not. Okay, good. Thank you. You'll get some good extra ham and bacon, Homer, when it comes time to kill that pig. Wilbur heard these words and his heart almost stopped. I think I'm going to faint, he whispered to the old chief who was watching. Kneel down, whispered the old sheep. Let the blood rush to your head. Wilbur sank to his knees. All radiance gone, his eyes closed. Look, screamed Fern, he's fading away. Hey, watch me, yelled Avery, crawling on the fours on the, into the crate. I'm a pig, I'm a pig. Avery's foot touched Templeton under the straw. What a mess, thought the rat. What fantastic creatures boys are. Why did I let myself in for this? The geese saw Avery in the crate and cheered. Avery, get out of this crate for an in this instant, commanded his mother. What do you think you are? I'm a pig, said Avery, tossing handfuls of straw into the air. Oink, oink, oink. The truck is rolling away, said Papa. The truck, with no one at the wheel, had started to roll downhill. Mr. Arable dashed to the driver's seat and put on the emergency brake. The truck stopped. The che geese cheered. Charlotte crouched and made herself as small as possible in the knot hole so Avery wouldn't see her. Come out at once, cried Miss, Mrs. Arable. Avery crawled out of the crate on hand and knees, making faces at Wilbur. Wilbur fainted away. The pig has passed out, said Mr. Zuckerman. Throw water on him. Throw buttermilk, suggested Avery. The geese cheered. Lurvy ran for a pail of water. Fern climbed into the pen and knelt by Wilbur's side. It's sunstroke, said, Miss, said Zuckerman. The heat's too much for him. Maybe he's dead, said Avery. Come out of that pig pen immediately, cried Mrs. Arable. Avery obeyed his mother and climbed into the back of the truck so he could see better. Lurvy returned with the cold water and dashed it onto Wilbur. Throw some on me, cried Avery. I'm hot too. Oh, keep quiet, said Fern. Keep quiet. Her eyes were brimming with tears. Wilbur, feeling the cold water, came to. He rose slowly to his feet with the geese cheering. He's up, said Mrs. Mr. Arable. I guess there's nothing wrong with him. I'm hungry, said Avery. I want a candied apple. Wilbur's all right now, said Fern. We can start. I want to take a ride in the Ferris wheel. Mr. Zuckerman and Mr. Arable and Lurvy grabbed the pig and pushed him head first into the crate. Wilbur began to struggle. The harder the men pushed, the harder he held back. Avery jumped down and joined the men. Wilbur kicked and thrashed and grunted. Nothing's wrong with this pig said Mr. Zuckerman, cheerfully, pressing his knee against Wilbur's behind. All together now, boys, shove! With a final heave, they jammed him into the crate. The geese cheered. Lurvy nailed some boards across the end so Wilbur couldn't back out. Then, using all their strength, the men picked up the crate and heaved it ab aboard the truck. They did not know that under the straw was a rat, and inside a knot hole was a big gray spider. They only saw a pig. Everybody in, called Mr. Arable. He started the motor. The ladies climbed in beside him. Mr. Zuckerman, Lurvy, Fern, and Arable rode in the back, hanging onto the sideboard. The 
truck began to move ahead. The geese cheered. The children answered their cheer, and everybody, in a way, everybody went to the fair. And there's Mr. Lurvy, Lurvy throwing the water on the pit on Wilbur, trying to wake him up from his faint. Wilbur's down here. He's kind of covered by water splashing down on him. The guy's here. You do you need to get your eyes checked again, girlfriend? You've got glasses on. You should be able to see it a little bit. I mean, I know it's not perfect to me having to stand so far away, but at least a little bit. I don't know. Well, it is what it is. All right. So that is the end of chapter 16. That was kind of a long chapter, huh? Oh, you know what? We do not have time to start chapter 17. But we can maybe read it tomorrow or the next day.